Hello there and welcome to another episode of Tipsy Tales, a show where I get tipsy and retell you things. Whether it's books, video games, uh, movies, TV shows, if it is pop culture, I will retell it to the most accurate ability while tipsy. And a full disclaimer that I am of the legal drinking age, I drink safely, I drink responsibly, I also drink a lot of water during these. So today I will be retelling the wonderful tale and adventures of the third generation of Pokemon. What else is there to do but to get tipsy now? Alrighty, so we are on to Pokemon Ruby and, oh, whoop, oh, Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, these were released for the Game Boy Advance, which personally seems like a downgrade from Game Boy Color. I'm just saying you go from Game Boy to Game Boy Color to Game Boy Advance. You know? Just me. Now this was released in 2002, 2003, depending on the uh, region you were living in. And the most prominent change in this game is to the battle mechanics where you can now uh, do double battles in which the opposing parties use two Pokemon at the same time. Consequently, certain Pokemon moves can affect multiple uh, combatants. I almost said contestants, combatants at once. <laughs> Multi-battles were also added alongside uh, the double battles. They're identical to double battles, uh, but there are two trainers on each side. Also new to the games are innate abilities and natures. Uh, the former is shared uh, by every Pokemon of a certain species, while the latter may vary among a particular species, rather than directly affecting the strength of the move. Secret bases were added as a one-off feature where players could open up a hole in the world and customize the area with various items that they picked up throughout the game. Players with secret bases could link up with one another and be able to battle an NPC version of the player uh, within its secret base. I remember this feature. It was pretty cool at the time. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire take place in the Hoenn region. Uh, the design was based off of the Japanese island and region of uh, Kyu Kyushu. Kyushu. <laughs> Good job, self. So. Uh, like Kyushu, Hoenn possesses many smaller islands and part of the region is dominated by sea routes, uh, several which contain areas where the player can dive underwater, I personally think this is frightening, but some people like scuba diving, so. So the protagonist of Ruby and Sapphire is a child who recently moved to a small town called Little Root Town. So in order to protect Professor Birch, the regional professor, uh, from an attacking Puchiena, Puchiena, Puchiena. Oh my god, why am I struggling so much? The player chooses their starter Pokemon. We have Sassy Lizard. We have Definitely Devoid of a Soul Water Demon, and we have precious spicy chicken. After defending Birch, the player is taken to his lab and receives the chosen Pokemon as their starter Pokemon. After that, the player encounters May slash Brendan, the child of Professor Birch. Uh, the player's rival obviously is also a Pokemon trainer and occasionally obviously battles the player throughout the game. The game's two main goals are defeating the eight uh, gym leaders proving oneself worthy of challenging the Elite Four and becoming the champion, and completing the Pokedex by capturing, evolving, and trading to obtain all the 202 Pokemon available between Ruby and Sapphire. In addition to the main quest of defeating gym leaders, there are also side quests in which the player can aid NPCs by fulfilling tasks, usually by obtaining items, typical, you know, story-driven narrative stuff. The most prominent subplot, however, involves Team Aqua and Team Magma, crime syndicates who want to use uh, Pokemon to alter the climate of Hoenn. And Ruby, the villains are Team Magma, who want to use the legendary Pokemon uh, Gruden to dry up the oceans and increase the region's landmass. <laughs> Saying that out loud, is a lot different than reading it on paper. And then you have in Sapphire where Team Aqua are the villains and they want to try to use Gruden's counterpart, Kyogre, 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 to flood the landmasses of Hoenn uh, and increase the region's ocean. So prior to facing the eighth uh, gym leader, the player has a showdown with Magma or Aqua where the respective team's leader is given a mystical orb with which to awaken the slumbering Pokemon, uh, believing it has the power to enthrall uh, their respective target, 
only for the Pokemon to become enraged, as expected from being woken from a nap, and cause catastrophic region-wide climate changes. In Ruby, it's a drought, and in Sapphire, it's heavy rainfall. And this continues until it's defeated or captured by the protagonist. The player's father also introduces them to Wally, a sickly young boy whom the player helps catch a Pokemon uh, to be his companion as he moves away from the big city. Wally eventually overcomes his illness and becomes a successful Pokemon trainer and ultimately becomes the final challenger before they face the Elite Four at least. And then we move on to Pokemon Emerald version which was released in Japan in 2004 and later released internationally in 2005. This version is an enhanced version of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. In this version, you actually face both Team Aqua and Team Magma. Between the player's visit to the 7th and 8th gyms, both teams summon their respectively sought out legendary Pokemon. However, the Pokemon refuses to obey either of the teams and begin fighting each other, which puts the world in a constant switching state of droughts and heavy rainfall. The player climbs a tower to summon the legendary Pokemon Rayquaza, who quells the other two Pokemon's rage. After the player defeats the Elite Four, they encounter two Pokemon flying across Hoenn, Latias and Latios. They are then able to access an area called the Battle Frontier, which adds several new challenges for the player. The player then is able to battle a uh, former champion, Steven Stone, in Meteor Falls, who happens to use a powered up version of his team from Ruby or Sapphire. The player is also now able to catch uh, Kyo Kyogri and, Ky oh, Jesus, and Grudon, which can be tracked by talking to the scientists in the Weather Institute. And that is that. Pokemon Emerald has a bit more uh, newness for a enhanced version of a generation game. So again, once more, additions are made to the gameplay of Pokemon and I think this will be a continuing trend, thread, thread, I was going to say thread and tread, trend at the same time, trend as we go along in further games. As always, please do not hesitate to comment below with your favorite Pokemon from the third generation. I personally, I think have actually skipped this generation in terms of playing the games. I don't remember ever playing these ones, but it is certainly interesting, especially considering the fact that they're starting to bring in uh, Pokemon's ability to affect the environment around them uh, and that is a feature in the later games so this is where it, it originates from. And as always if you enjoyed this video don't be afraid to let me know, give it a like, give it a subscribe, uh, head on over to Patreon where you will most likely get the outtakes from this video which I can tell you are pretty enjoyable if I do say so myself. Thank you for watching so much and keep on shining storytellers.